Um, um, uh, um, the Joe yeah. Rogan experience. Okay, so... You're listening to the Wannabes Mobcast. You really don't need any introduction, um, but we wanted to give you a chance to, to sort of introduce yourself anyway. John was thinking, um, what do you tell people you do if they're not already familiar with you, which probably doesn't, uh, not, not very many people, I'm sure, but, or maybe you just, uh, you're, you're glad you're not recognized. You get a little moment of privacy, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, I suppose like, you know, let's say that I'm a hard enduro rider. If people don't know what that is, it's kind of fairly easy to explain, isn't it? Uh, Fair you know, enough. people recognize dirt bikes, don't they? So it's just, it's dirt bikes on gnarly terrain, isn't it, basically? <laughs> <laughs> we sometimes tell people hiking with the dirt bike. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. No, that's, that's excellent. I mean, um, I, I think like that, you know, obviously your name comes up, it's almost become a verb at this point, you know, and, and a lot of the guys that we ride with, the joke is always, well, Jarvis could do it on a, you know, on an uglier bike or whatever, or Jarvis <laughs> would get up that, you know, <laughs> it's like. Yeah, um, it's cool. <laughs> so i guess um t tell us i i think probably the thing on everybody's mind is your your injury at this point i don't know if you want to share a little bit about how that went down and how you're feeling how it's going yeah it's, it's uh there's no good time to have an injury but this is probably one of the worst times to have an injury but <laughs> yeah it's uh we'd had one round of the series so at a podium and then romaniacs you know i was actually won the first day so feeling good and then uh just fighting with Manny we were kind of had quite a lead on everybody else but it was getting towards the end of the second day and uh Damo said uh my mechanic said you know just follow him home you know you're, you're way ahead of everybody else and I'm like yeah but what if I can just get a little bit of time on him you know what I mean <laughs> but I know in that case. so I was I was I was tired but uh, you know, I just got a few seconds on Manny and I was just pushing as hard as I can. And, you know, it could have happened anyway, but it was just, uh, it's always a bit of bad luck in this, isn't it? But, you know, I did make a mistake. I hit a rut and then it was a case of fall off or put your foot down and the inst your instinct is to put your foot down. And then all, you know, a fair bit of speed and pressure, all your pressure's on your knee and some it's got to give, especially when you're tired as well, isn't it? So, yeah. Well, I had my knee braces on to probably save something, but I think with the ACL, it's that kind of twisting is difficult to avoid when you get it on the, the exact perfect place. It's so easy to snap. Do so you know how fast you were, were going when you when you hit? I mean, I'd slowed up a bit by the time I'd seen the rut. You know, it was a case of do I trying to avoid it and maybe, you know, get in trouble or try and hit it but I couldn't quite see what was in the rut and then it, it, it was a little bit deeper than I thought and it tipped me off, but I'd probably slow it up quite a bit by the time I'd put my foot down, but Maybe that's uh, awful. Yeah. yeah, one of them. Just yeah. Try not to keep analysing it, you know, why did it happen? <laughs> that's not, get on the, now. not the thing you want to be talking about right now. <laughs> yeah. So we'll leave cringy. off with that question. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's how it goes, isn't it? Like uh, I know I, I broke a toe um, several months back, late last year actually, and um, you know it was it was the last mile of of like I don't know thirty miles of single track, you know, and you're feeling good, but you're tired and and you push a little too much, and that's when stuff sort of blows up on you. So yeah, I mean everybody's gonna I think have an injury of some sort, aren't they? At some point, uh, I've been having a about a few years riding, haven't I? And I did my other year other knee twenty years ago. So 
kind of know a little bit what to expect. <laughs> Uh, the, the Instagram pictures are pretty gnarly. The videos with the tubes and all that stuff. Um, it looks like quite a process getting healed up from that. Yeah, that's it. It's just one of them. You can't really speed everything up massively. You can just do little bits to, to make sure it's to do as much as you can. But the main thing is to make sure it's right at the end of the day. Just yeah. trying to... Are you able to walk around on it now or is it still? Yeah, tender? walking good, walking good. It yeah. feels good. But they said like, it's seven weeks now and they said i can't uh run our job until four or five months mm. so when it, <laughs> so that's that kind of puts it into perspective yeah yeah well but but you have the the crutch push-ups and all the rest of it seems like you're staying at it yeah I, I'm trying to keep the the, the media keep us thing going, but it's a little bit difficult <laughs> fair enough Fair enough. Yeah, I think um, trying to push content to Instagram on a regular basis can can become a challenge if you're not riding. That's hard. Yeah, that's it. But you know, it's always look at the positives. It has it's a chance to have a little bit of a break and keep him busy enough with a few projects. You know, the Jarvis race gear and the tours and stuff. So getting organised with that and the new website. So get my plug in there early. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll give you a chance. Um, we we definitely actually want to hear about that. Um, we have um, a, a space, so we'll, we'll get to that for yeah. sure. We have a long list of questions, and <laughs> I actually just finished reading your book, which was excellent. I I really enjoyed it. It was a great story, and you know, just kind of learning how you got from, you know, your your start to where you are now, and and sort of rising to the top in in more than one different sport. Um, it was just it was a great story. But you know, if if people want to read your book i don't want to go over too much of of what's in there because they can buy, buy the your book, book. Huh? yeah buy the book <laughs> just do that uh but yeah there's a lot of different things that i think we can touch on i think you know one of the interesting things you know from on that point about you know you having kind of come to the top and in, in first in trials and now enduro it's it's um i think one of the questions that needs to be asked is is you know what advice do you have for people who are you know one young and you know looking to get into the sport and 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 become you know kind of the top of the game and then also it's kind of a two-part question because i think in our space like i didn't start writing until i was in my 20s and you know Kel, i'm pushing 40 i'll be 40 next year so not, yeah. not so far behind you but yeah i feel like a lot of the guys that we ride with are guys who you know they're they're you know into their careers they can afford to buy a bike finally and the, all the gear that comes along with it they can make that investment but they're just starting out. And so I kind of like from both of those perspectives, like from an early perspective, somebody who's got their youth and enthusiasm and, and somebody who's got all the enthusiasm, but not their youth. Kind of like what, did, what advice would you give kind of to those yeah, two groups of it. people? Yeah. You see it a lot, you know, it's the guys that have perhaps ridden bikes when they're younger and then they go and have a career family and all the rest of it. And then coming back into it. So probably the first thing to say is, you know, you know, make sure you're, you're fairly your fitness and stuff is good in it to avoid injury as much as you can you know eat, get back into it slowly in it and uh, fitness is a big part of it and then just get the basics of of the riding you know on the schools and stuff you've got to get the basics before you can progress and if you if you get them really good you'll progress a lot quicker once mm. you you know if you had to give me another chance to plug something i've got an online training uh, subscription coming on the website soon <laughs> that, no it's an upcoming thing yeah that's it i've got uh you know videos ready i did them you know last year and stuff so you know just some it it's good to pass on the knowledge and it's going to give me something to do while i'm injured as well mm, and very you cool. know, i've done loads of schools around the world over the years so it's kind of i've learned you know how to how's best to teach people a little bit and uh you just learn by uh experience so it's good to pass on the knowledge and you know, maybe some younger riders as well, produce some next champions. We've got the Jarvis team as well. You know, it's kind of a try and give them the opportunity to progress to the pro level. Yeah. I, I've heard you talk about that um, in some of your other, you know, some of your other appearances, which sounds really interesting. Um, I was going to ask you, you know, throw out a couple of tips, you know, you said get the basics right, but maybe uh, we'll, we'll put a link down in the description and, and um, we'll just get people to link over to your course and they can get the whole thing that way. Yeah. Do it right. Yeah, yeah, cheers. I don't mind. You know, it is a lot of it's clutch control. So unless you've got that clutch control, you know, it's difficult to go on to harder stuff safely because the first thing you, you do to save when you get in trouble is pull the clutch in it. So 
to get that. You know, it's better doing it in an easy way first. You know, make sure you're really confident, and then uh, and then gradual progression. You've got to have the progression rather than going into real gnarly stuff and crashing and smashing your bike up <laughs> or <laughs> tearing your knee off. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> I mean, I think that kind of is a nice segue into the questions we had around cross training and around, you know, obviously you came from a trials background and um, I've spent all of maybe 20 minutes on a trials bike and I, I it was started a fun 20 minutes though. It was a great 20 <laughs> minutes. I love it. Um, but I mean, is that like a, a place that you'd recommend people start in their, you know, like, to buy a trials bike and kind of, you know, learn the, the technical basics uh, in that sport, given that's kind of lower yeah. speed and things like that, or, or is it, um, you know, definitely really a way matter. to build confidence, definitely a way to build confidence because the bike's obviously lighter in it. So if you do make mistakes, you can manhandle it easier, mm. but really for the, you know, for the, the kids and stuff to progress, I think it's really important because it gives them confidence. If they're on a bike, that's too big for them. You know, they're not going to learn as quick. So, but, uh, you can learn the skills, you know, for the older guys, if you just, you can you can learn it on a just on an enduro bike, but mm. you know a trials bike definitely helps with the confidence. Do you still um, do you still ride trials at all, or is it all enduro now? Yeah, all enduro. I've kind of no motivation to get on a trials bike at all. Uh, Put that world behind. Yeah, that's it. And uh, yeah, just always training on the enduro. It's just put everything into that. Do you do any other kind of cross training? I, I know you, you know, you talked about fitness, but uh, I know a lot of guys in the space uh, ride mountain bikes, for example, to, to work on their lines and things like that, or just for cardio, maybe. Yeah, a little bit, not too much, to be honest. Uh, you know, a lot of it's weights and uh, was doing quite a little bit of jogging. So yeah, but mix it up. It's just whatever you've got access to, whatever is easier to do, it, you enjoy. It's all around fitness, you know. The sport is is so varied, isn't it? You've got you've got to have the strength, lift the bike up, but you've got to have the stamina and all the rest of it as well. So, you now when people ask me, I just say, anything is good. You know what I mean? Whatever you you've got time to do, it's gonna gonna benefit you. But and it depends on your your body as well, doesn't it? Uh, Fair enough. It, yeah. Right. You're making me feel better about it because I've always kind of taken the approach that like riding's the real thing and everything else is kind of just to, to get me in shape. It doesn't really matter. You know? like, yeah, yeah. You're just trying to get me into riding mountain bikes, which I, I feel like I probably should do. It's, but it's, it's good, like, it's good for your lines and it's good for your legs. I don't know, but I'm terrible yeah. on the mountain bike. So, <laughs> Yeah, I, I was curious about the, uh, you know, I, and I feel like you mentioned this somewhere in your book, but uh, you were talking about coming from trials and getting into the enduro space. Obviously, enduro is a lot faster of a sport like that transition from you know the the slow kind of technical grind all the way up to like where you're at now it's like you watch some of your gopro videos and you know you're, you're hustling it's like it's ridiculous I, it's like, I don't know yeah i can't like i don't know I, I have like such a hard time pushing myself to go faster and you know and, and get up to the speed where it, it looks cool on a gopro <laughs> i mean i don't know there, there's like a yeah there's something there I, I was just curious like you know what what you know, if there was like a progression to training and going faster and how you kind of uh, like trained yourself to like get up to speed in, in that way. Yeah. So the transition from trials, I'd never been on, you know, done any motocross or enduro at all. It was literally, you know, starting from scratch on a different bike. So the technical stuff was easy, you know, yeah. pop over yeah. a log or whatever, no problem. But take, take me to a motocross track back then and I was just, I just looked like an idiot. I didn't know what to do. You know, it was just a big learning curve. And then, you know, I was never going to be the fastest, but I just got to a certain pace where, you know, it was going to help me. You know, you don't have to be the best around a motocross track, but you didn't need a certain amount of speed, you know, hitting ruts and sand, sand especially in trial. You just don't get that same feeling and hitting sandy stuff. So, you know, a bit to learn there, but. Uh, it was good, it was good fun trying to learn that and uh, just uh, you know made mistakes, had crashes and but just I could, even now I can just do enough you know on the speed stuff if it's fast and I'm always going to lose a little bit of time on that to some of the other guys you know the younger riders now they're so fast around a motocross track as well so you know it's difficult you know to compete a little bit on a faster yeah. race. Do you spend any time or have you spent any time doing any motocross stuff? I have to ask because we're based in Southern California and that's like the big sport here is, is motocross. That, not that a lot of it. Yeah. We ride 
I actually been on the track like once, but yeah. Have you spent any time doing any motocross training yeah. or anything like that? More early on, you know, just to get that mm. transition of the, to, to the faster riding, but uh, now not so much. I kind of just put all my effort into the, the gnarly stuff really. You know, I, I just know I can't, I can only get to a certain speed and a certain speed that I want to get to around a motocross track. <laughs> There's always that risk in there pushing the limits, I think, around there at my age. But I can do okay, but I just kind of put everything into uh, where I can win races, and it's the gnarly stuff. Yeah. It makes that stuff look good, too. So, <laughs> um, How much time can you really make up, you know, passing you guys in the gnarly sections? I, I, I feel, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously nowhere as fast as you are, but, like, you know, I think John and I both um, catch up time when we get into the rocky stuff, and that's kind of where we've spent more time. But we lose so much in the the faster stuff that it's hard to it's hard to make it back up. Yeah, that's it. I mean, the the younger riders now they they're they're good at everything, aren't they? So yeah. there's no real weaknesses in, even in the gnarly stuff. I don't have that big advantage like I did six yeah. seven years ago. But uh, you know, <laughs> just use that experience. It's all about a little bit of experience. You know, if you get your lines right, if you can walk the track before, you know, having that vision for the lines and then it's using your technique to to hit the lines that brings up a, another question that i had is um you know you've you've talked about uh, these guys are getting better is it is it that the sport's getting more aggressive more extreme is it extreme enduro is more extreme than it used to be or the guys are just better the bikes are better what's what's going on there yeah some of the races are, are really pushing the limits aren't they of the, the gnarly stuff but at the end of the day the sport's becoming more professional you know more money involved more riders uh, it's becoming bigger isn't it so yeah the riders it's just just more professional so it's just more that you have more people in it with training and financial backing whatever the the resources to kind of get better at it is that yeah that's it and the you know the differences between the riders become smaller there's no massive gaps in the in the results but it's Was good to see you know I remember the the one year it was uh, Erzberg. I we got up at like I don't know three o'clock in the morning and watched it. Uh, it was the year that you guys all finished together because uh, I had that that last section at the very end and you guys all crossed the line together. Is that like a kind of a learning experience, I guess, for the people who are laying out the tracks to you know realize that maybe there are some limits for what you guys can do in the in the context of you know trying to finish a race and not just carrying your bike with some backpack straps <laughs> up a mountain. <laughs> yeah, I think they are they are trying to find the limits. So yeah, Erzberg's a little bit of a unique event where you know we can walk the track, but they kind of don't want us to walk all the track. So that particular section, nobody knew about. So nobody had ridden it. You know, not want even a line coming down it or anything. So you know, normally if you if you're doing a race, you'd probably you know ride up it at least once, wouldn't you, just to see. <laughs> But uh, it. It somebody's got to yeah. test it, right? Yeah, so it was yeah completely new. We didn't know, pick another line or, you know, know what we were doing. And it just, the bike just sat there and it, it wasn't going anywhere. So, you know, once the, the, the riders have bunched up, it becomes a little bit awkward. It's like, what, what are you going to do? So, <laughs> well, How would you like, I mean, the, for, for race organizers, how are they going to pre-run a race and have, you know, the skill of, of you and some of the other top riders? Like, in the, I mean, I'm assuming nobody in the, the testing, I don't know, setup is going to be able to ride quite like you would. So how will they know? if? It's yeah, really no, there's, an, there's enough riders out there, you know, now that uh, a lot of people can just push up a section like that, you know. Mm, fair enough. There's so many riders that can do it, you know, in the race, it's different, isn't it? Because you, you're putting a whole big lap ball together, but, you know, right. a lot of riders could just, push up this stuff now well so that kind of brings us to a, another section of questions that we had um you know for some of us who are getting older but um, anybody who wants to be competitive you know fitness and, and training we talked a little bit about how you do you know strength training or whatever but there's kind of a mental aspect to it right and i think you just touched on that with the in a race setting it's different um, we haven't done a whole lot of competitive events ourselves but they do have a different feel and a lot more stress and um, pressure and and any tips or tricks for how you deal with the, the mental side of that game uh, just uh, you know stay do your preparation if, if you're prepared good you know you're going to be mentally good aren't you? you know you've done everything you can and then uh, in the race it's a case of staying focused on on the track in front of you not what's around you what's going to happen what yeah. might happen <laughs> well, I, I, it's funny I, that that question and it, 
resonates with me. I think because I so I've done all of one hard enduro race in my life. I, I did the uh, King of the Motos race out here in Johnson Valley, and uh, you know, prepping days in advance, you know, getting everything ready, going out there, camping, the whole bit. And you know, I remember just getting to the race line, and I was just I was exhausted. I think it was all the stress from just getting to the race line, and it's like. I guess there has to be some part of it that comes with experience where, you know, you just stop worrying about everything that's going on and just, you can focus on, on riding. Is that the case? Is it just an experience thing or is there anything? Yeah, that's it. So, you know, even for you guys prepping for a race, it's the same, you know, you do all that preparation and it's actually hard work, especially something like Erzberg where you need to basically try and walk the whole track. So, you know, you can, you can feel, you will feel tired from walking, but, it's kind of a way up, you know, the advantage of spending that energy to walk something and, and go, rather than going and not know the lines. Uh, but, uh, you know, other races, you just, you just turn up and ride, which is better, <laughs> less stressful, <laughs> less work. <laughs> yeah, I, I made it all of like, I think I made it 11 miles of just carrying my bike through rocky, you know, wash. I don't know. Did you ever ride the King of the Motos? I, I feel like you yeah, were the, one of the original. Yeah, I've done it a couple of times. Yeah. 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 So you know the terrain that's out there. I yeah. just, you know, I drag my bike through, and I was like, I'm just so exhausted, I can't even keep the two wheels down. When you start so, out tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that put it all in perspective for me. As I, yeah, a lot of it when you when you're in the race, it's about staying calm and you know remembering yeah. your technique and thinking it through. People kind of panic, don't they, when there are other riders around and giving problem. it loads of throttle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, common mistake, you know, just giving it too much gas and then you're fighting the bike a little bit. You've got to stay calm and think it through. It's better to take your time on the gnarly stuff and, and think it through and conserve energy. Remember, it's a long race, isn't it? And, you know, if you just stay calm in the beginning, quite often it helps you later on. But Yeah, I can That makes sense. totally see that. I, I wanted to ask you, I forgot when you were talking about clutch control as kind of a tip in the beginning. Um, how much do you generally sign of slip the clutch while you're riding. We kind of have a debate going amongst guys that, you know, you're, you're going to burn it out or something. And I, I don't care personally. I use it for well all I can, but what's your take? Yeah, the clutch is everything. You know, you're on the clutch all the time. That's where you get the, the precision from. Right. You know, you, re you react, you can react really quickly with the clutch to, to, you know, save the bike if it's spinning at the back a little bit out of control. So very important. Yeah, I, I would totally agree. Um, I think guys that though, I mean, you know, if you're not in it for the finances and you got to carry yourself, um, you know, I guess they're worried about breaking parts or something, but maybe I should care yeah. more about the bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you do have a, a bad habit of breaking yeah. out clutches. So. Well, you know, invest in the Jarvis online training and it's it'll invest, you'll save money. With better tech. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Right. Save money on the bike. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I think that's a fair point though. You know, you can spend a lot of money on gear, but probably making yourself a little bit better doing something like the training is probably more valuable, better ROI there than. Yeah, that's it. And I'm kind of thinking, you know, you've got your, your basic techniques, but with hard endure, there's so many variations terrain. It's different wherever you go. So, you know, we can just, I think I could talk forever about techniques and different situations and <laughs> well and, and but you're the guy that to talk about it i mean you invented a lot of this this stuff i think so or pioneer yeah it's that time it's that time to pass on the knowledge yeah i i, I love it <laughs> i think uh you know because we kind of breezed over this but i wanted to know more about you know what you are doing from like a fitness perspective and and those sorts of things you mentioned you're running is there like a routine that you follow or anything or like a regular schedule or is it just kind of yeah, I mean, it's really difficult to stick to a routine, you know, with a, ideally I'd just kind of off season, not do anything, but you know, I, I do this. <laughs> I mean, it's not just me I then. Mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, have a rest, but when I say not do anything, I mean, not, uh, you know, the schools and, you know, up smaller races and that, and just focus on, on training and uh, getting fit. But even now, you know what I mean? I've got to keep my upper body strong as well. And, you know, keep that fitness for the rest of my body. Do you find it works to just ride a lot? Um, yeah, is that like a you try to ride two or three times a week just to keep it, you know? Like I think, that? yeah, I think it's a, a balance of a little bit how you feel as well. If you can, uh, you know, hammer the bike 
lots of hours and stay keen. It's probably easier for younger guys, but, you know, you can also do a little bit too much as well. You've got to go out, you know, really keen to get on your bike. So it's always a mix and then change it a little bit, mix it up. You know, depending on the race, you can do short, intense training or you can go for longer rides. But, uh, I, I can imagine you don't you don't want to show up to the race going, God, I just don't want to get on my bike again. <laughs> like, yeah, that's it. Do you ever that's get tired of, tired of riding? I mean, you've, you've spent years on the bike now. and it's, Yeah, I, mean, I love riding, but, you know, if you've been on the bike a lot, you know, you've got to have a break from it. You, your mind has got to have a break from it to go out, you know, you, you always want to get on your bike, but you've got to, that extra little bit of uh, enthusiasm can make the difference if you, you know, before a race, a big race, I'll, I'll basically have the week off, I won't touch the bike, so, you know, when I get on the bike, I'm raring to go. Yeah. I think that actually is a nice segue into another question that Lee has. You know, when you're not riding, what are you doing for fun? Yeah, not much time at the moment for fun. But, <laughs> right. uh, <laughs> Trying yeah, to fix a knee. Yeah. The, you know, Do you have any fun, other sports that thing. you follow or anything like, like uh, yeah, anything else you get into other than off-road riding? What, what's the lifestyle off the bike? Yeah, yeah well, we're in, uh, I'm in Spain a lot. But, uh, you know, I ended up getting a house there and doing the tours there. So it's a pretty cool place with the weather, sim- similar to weather to you guys. And, you know, got the beach close and stuff. So lots of stuff to do. But, you know, I end up traveling around a lot as well, doing the schools and just riding for fun and new places. Kind of, you know, even though it's work, it's it's all fun and relaxing stuff. It's nice when you can kind of run a business that fits your hobbies too. So that's always it's always a plus. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. the dream. So many places to run. One of the things that uh, you've you've talked a little bit with us and and before about kind of what it's like to be an older rider, um, and you mentioned you know how you got into your most recent accident was kind of pushing it towards the end, and that's a hundred percent an experience that we've both had and and had injuries. Um, you know, similar. I, I cracked my back actually last year. You know, same kind of thing, pushing too hard. Uh, you know, is is there anything like how, how do you manage that risk factor? How do you manage the mental game of like you know an injury might take a little bit longer to heal as you get an older or whatever, um, you know, and still stay competitive? How do you how do you sort of find that balance? Yeah, I think when you're riding, you know, you you kind of your experience tells you when you you know might crash. <laughs> you know, when you're feeling when it's too much. Know, yeah, you know, you've got to be able to see you know riding what you what you can see in front of you so anything you can't see is always a risk in it you know long grass or whatever so you're gonna you know proceed with caution and stuff so you know you're just riding it's all about riding within your ability in it and what you can see and reading the terrain i i think that's probably generally good advice um do you find i mean you're still winning races so i'm, I'm guessing you're not riding any slower but you do you rely more on experience as as you've uh, sort of gotten more experience to rely on if that makes sense yeah yeah definitely obviously use your experience not just when you're in the race but you know all the preparation and training and all the rest of it so but it becomes more important to to manage your training as you get older doesn't it because you've got to rest more and stuff and you know day after day after day you're not probably not going to do it like when you were 20 (laughs) right yeah, you don't have as much sort of body to throw into it, I guess, or, or to sacrifice yeah, to it. Yeah, <laughs> more, more the recovery, I think, you know, yeah. where you're going to have more aches and pains and stuff. But, you know, recovery is, is harder, I find, as you get older. That makes sense. I mean, a lot of the guys that we ride with, some of, some of the fastest guys that we know are, you know, late 50s, early 60s and, and just – you know, they, I don't think they push as hard as, as we might, but um, they have that sort of trail experience and they know how to how to keep pace without making it as much work as we do. Yeah, that's it. You know, ride efficiently. Yeah. Make less mistakes. And, right. Uh, the, end, the time's going to be good at the end. I think mistakes probably a big key there. I mean, uh, you know, every mistake you make ends up costing a whole lot of time and energy and sort of gets you off your mental game. And I'm assuming that's a big deal. Yeah, that's it. It comes with experience, doesn't it? You naturally make less mistakes, I think, more right. riding you've done. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. One of the things that I'm curious about is, so there's a ride, local ride here. It's not a big race or anything, but it's called the Big Bear Trail Ride. Actually, you're wearing the shirt for it today. Oh, yeah. yes, I am. Um, <laughs> and it's a it's a 210-ish mile rate, uh, ride, right? And we did it this last year. We've done it the year before. 
and uh, we dropped out. I think the first year we tried it at like 130 miles, and last year we did it was like 145 or something okay. like that. And it's like, you know, well, it's, not that it's 10 hours on the bike at that point. Too, yeah. So it's, yeah. I mean, we're just like exhausted, dehydrated. You know, there's just nothing left in the tank, and I'm I'm wondering, like, at that point, it's it's a it's got to be like this this mental game, you know, just a willingness to push through and you know finish. Yeah. And, and I'm just like wondering how you develop like that kind of mental toughness, the the grit to push through mm. day after day. Like I'm thinking, like Romaniacs, you're doing you know four days, hundred miles a day, or, or however much it is, and it's like you know when you get up on the on day four you know and you've got another hundred miles to do like what what what's pushing you through that that last bit yeah that's it i mean uh it comes down to the mental aspect like you say so but uh you know that's kind of why we do this sport isn't it you know overcoming that mental challenge and that feeling of, of getting to the end isn't it you know keeping going not giving up so you have to you have to but want to. That's it. So we just need a grow. Yeah, here. that's yeah. it. <laughs> you know, yeah. see, at the end of the day, it's how much you want it, isn't it? If uh, your body can only take so much, but you've got to find the limit of what it can take, isn't it? But uh, yeah, your event sounds gnarly. Ten hours of anything's not going to be easy, is it? I mean, I think we just uh, we need to want it more badly. Like, I, I don't know what else there is to say. I mean, stop quitting. Just, well, <laughs> Just describe your feeling out out of ten. Out, how much were you? Just nothing left, or pretty close. But dehydration, yeah. you know, you can't. If you're dehydrated, there's there's no point. You're not going anywhere. So, if you've made that mistake, it's not going to be down to how much you know you want it. Your body's yeah. not going to go any further. I, mean, I have a bunch of questions on that. Just like you know, how how are you packing in the calories and staying hydrated? Is there something that you're doing to? I mean, just obviously drinking a lot of water. Are you prehydrating? taking gel packs like i mean everybody's got put, their own put an iv in, in. yeah <laughs> yeah that's it just yeah before the race you know eat and drink well and then uh, during the race just get as much as you can the, our races vary a little bit you know you can stop remain actually get a 20 minute stop halfway so get a good refuel but uh, even this year on that on that last day on that day two where i got injured you know we had all the riders had dehydrated but you know it's we don't normally stop other than that stuff, but uh, you know, I know if you if you dehydrate, it's happened to me. It's just game over. Are you using any kind of like like Gatorade or Pedialyte or anything like that in your hydration pack? Yeah, I've been using different things, but uh, get a good mix of electrolytes and then the energy gels and stuff. But so I have some on the bars. You so know, you are putting calories in there's... while you're riding, then? Yeah, you've got to you know you've got to put calories in, <clears throat> but. Uh, comes down to training a little bit more fitter you are you know less calories you're going to need in it yeah yeah it, it's such a big sense. deal here because i mean southern california it's so hot and i mean we're riding in half the year it's, it's 100 yeah yeah it's so dry it hardly ever rains so it's just one of those things that i think half the people we asked you know that was one of the questions they had when we told them we were you know how do you stay hydrated you. yeah it's how do you how do you get over the hydration issue because that's always an issue here yeah. Um, so we promised to give you a chance to talk a little bit about your businesses. I, I would kind of, um, you know, obviously we, we follow your Instagram pages and we kind of um, pay attention to everything that you do. I think everybody does, but um, you know, you have a couple of different things that you're doing and I'm kind of interested in this, the lifestyle concept of having businesses that are in this, this sport. So you can kind of merge, you know, the, the fun and the business angle and maybe make a living doing this stuff. Um, but tell us, you know, kind of what, what's the spread of stuff that you're involved in? Yeah, so um, as you know, I'm 46, so you know, I need some kind of transition into something hard, something after. Uh, it's difficult just to stop riding it, and uh, I've not made enough money just to retire either. <laughs> not, not like the basketball players, huh? they just quit. And... Yeah, that's it. It's, a, it's a, a small sport, it's not millions involved, so but you know, carry on something, keep my name in the sport, help the young riders. And uh, I've travelled around the world a lot doing the schools and stuff. And uh, my idea of the signature tours, the Jarvis signature tours, is to give people the opportunity to ride all these places. So, you know, we're going to have bikes in each location, keep the high standard of bikes for the Husqvarna's, you know, the soft mooses and everything. So you can do the hard stuff if you want, but also catering for lesser riders. You know, people sometimes just want to go and have fun as well or a mix of everything. So experience these countries, good riding. 
and that's the plan. We've got it's uh, you know eight locations now, I think. So keep building on that, and it's you know it's people, some people, uh, new guys, but you know a lot of the places guys I've met over the years. So what's, what's the structure of those? So you, these eight places, obviously you can't be in all eight all the time. So you've, you know, you've got kind of a similar setup. Is it like franchised out? What's a, how's yeah, that that's it. So it's, it's a franchise type thing. So, you know, I'll go to these places when I can mm-hmm. do this a tour with me. And then when I'm not there, we have, you know, replacement trainers, tour guides that can, uh, you know, do that little bit of teaching. They're good enough level to teach the guys and, uh, good bites, good guides, and carry it on like that. How much of it is training versus uh, sort of just going out for a ride, or is that, you know, people have options when they sign up? Yeah, it can be, you know, flexible, but uh, always try and have a good mix of, you know, fun riding experience. The country is the first thing, and then, uh, you know, learn a few skills as well, and then some real challenges if if you want it. I, I think that's definitely something that's on our bucket list. I'll have to get out and uh, do all one of these rides. Um, you also have the, the, you have the Instagram channel around the Jarvis signature gear. I think it's called something, something like that. Um, yeah. So the, the story there, the Jarvis race. Yeah. The Jarvis race gear. So right. it's kind of, we're starting with the, you know, the, the Jarvis replica stuff, you know, looking like the, the factory rider, you know, hopefully build it from there, build the range up, but, uh, kind of all fits in keep the the jarvis brand going that way and uh you know the idea is to all help fund the jarvis team as well with the young riders keep the jarvis team going at the hard enduros in the future i didn't realize that you were so i mean i i kind of figured this sort of um you know build a business for for towards retirement or something like that but i didn't realize you were also helping to fund the team yeah that's it so it, it runs we did it this year runs alongside you know the factory team with selected young riders but uh you know it's low budget at the moment you know it's gonna be starting from nothing but you know the big biggest thing i can offer the young guys is my experience and training so they can come to my place in spain do the training you know get all the prepare them for moving forwards as quickly as they can because i know it's hard i've been there you know for either that step from amateur they're there and they're in their van you know they're, they're working hard but they're probably you know don't know exactly the process to get to a factory rider or a pro rider or just to improve so you know it's a big step now it's probably getting bigger as it gets more professional you know the young amateur riders trying to make it as a pro it's or a big a step yeah do you have um any plans to bring like a, a one of the driver's signature tours to the united states anywhere or is that yeah definitely map? Definitely. So start in know. California and then we'll show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, you know, if you've got any ideas, anyone out there, you know, just uh, apply on the website and, uh, you know, we're open to options and uh, consider, you know, it just has to be cool riding and uh, a good experience, you know, experience the country and stuff as well. And, well, we got plenty of that. Yeah. yeah, we've got some terrain out here that's that's uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, so we'll we'll have to throw a link to that in the down in the description too, so everybody can go check that out and maybe drop some. Yeah, I see. I've done a bit of riding out there, so I know it's it's cool stuff. And you've got the weather for it, the climate, haven't you? So you know, that's come the come during the winter, and if you catch one of our very rare uh, rain days, then it can be really yeah, good. Yeah, that's it. It's <laughs> the same in Spain. So yeah, you know, a lot of lot of people in the winter they want to escape, don't they? Get a bit of sunshine and, and ride in as well. So. Yeah, you know it's perfect. And then I guess the last piece, or, or that we're aware of anyway, if it's sort of your your business empire, we'll call it, is uh, you know you're doing quite well on Instagram, and um, I, you know that's been sort of impressive to watch. We've been following you for for quite a long time there, and you know, sort of uh, explosive growth recently. But how do you, you know, I, it doesn't look like you carry a GoPro during the races. So how do you how do you find content? What's your sort of strategy for for how do you run the channel? Yeah, you yeah, know, we, uh, we do put the GoPros on. It's a little bit tricky now. We're not allowed to use them on the helmet, so it's not quite as good position. So we need a solution for that. But uh, I don't know. The content kind of just comes, pops into my head, just random stuff. I don't know. <laughs> like crushing <laughs> just, your shed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, That's it. That, that definitely helped. You know, it kind of, that kind of spiraled. It started with a few hops on the grass, didn't it? And then it just kind of had to take it a step further every time but are you looking to get rid of the shed anyway is that the uh <laughs> well let's see i did did a deal with the, the missus to 
<laughs> but you know, I was expecting to get over the shit. I thought it had a bit of a chance, but I don't think it did. No, I think it turned out better this way though. Everybody loved that stuff. <laughs> I think it, it re- resonated so well because everybody stuck at home, you know, during COVID and right. you're out there riding around your shed. It's like, yes, that's it, what I want to be doing. It was the, like the, yeah, it was that madness of being trapped in your house. Right. And we all want to take our bikes and yeah. crush the roof. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So one positive of COVID got me more followers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been kind of an interesting time. Actually, that's, that'd be an interesting, um, you know, how has that impacted the, the race scene and is it coming back and what, what's your experience there? Yeah, it's still a little bit tricky with the travel, but, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's, we can all, we can all do the traveling. We just have to go through the process. So you, I mean, did that, did that impact your ability to run tours and are, are those back up to speed? Yeah, gradually, you know, it has obviously impacted it, but, you know, we're, it's all open for business. So, you know, it, it, like I say, a little bit tricky to travel, but it can right. be done. So, you know, people are just starting to move a little bit more. So yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. It's nice to see things opening back up. We're, we're excited for that. So Yeah, that's it, isn't it? This is kind of a random question, but it kind of just popped into my head. I'm, I've always wondered how like the logistics of it work with your, you know, you're traveling all over the world to do these events, you know, you're racing and obviously you got to set up and do everything like, you know, how you, you're just relying on the logistics team to get your bike there and, you know, set up and everything. It's like, I mean, how, how did you manage that kind of early on before you had the, you know, Husqvarna backbone to help you guys out in, in the whole race scene and everything? Yeah, that's going back a few years. Uh, I've been factory rider for a bit, so they can yeah. take care of that now. But, you know, most of the races were in Europe, weren't they? And then when I did the ones in the, the US, just borrow a standard bike. But for the first five years, five, six years, I was just, I just rode a standard bike anyway in the main races. So uh, hmm. it didn't matter. I could jump on any bike as long as it's, it was in good condition and go that's and race it. it. Just that's what everybody the always nooses and go. That's what everybody always says about you anyway, right? Anybody starts complaining about their bike out on a ride, the answer is always Jarvis could, could handle it. He, he'd be fine. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times that's been, a, that's been the oh, comment, man. right? Is... You're not allowed to complain about a bike. Is you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that brings an interesting question, actually, that I was thinking about earlier is um, how different is your bike these days, um, you know, compared to, uh, like, John here at King of the Motos a couple of years ago got passed by was it Cody Webb that, like yeah flying by and cody webb and, and manuel Luttenbeck were like right on each other's tail and i'm like sitting off to the side of the trail dying and <laughs> gasping for breath and they're lapping me <laughs> and uh you know there's a distinct difference between the bikes that that if, you know from my perspective the ones that they're riding and you know the stock bike that i'm riding you know i i guess that yeah that's the question is just how you know how how, how, how different are the bikes from the how much does it matter yeah from yeah, what you yeah that's it i mean it's it's becoming more competitive, so them little changes, you know, can make the difference. But they are literally little changes. Do you know what I mean? They're not massively different. So we don't have a lot of expensive stuff on. It's more settings, suspension settings, mapping settings, stuff like that. It's not hugely different. And then uh, interesting. Yeah. You, you've mentioned, um, we've heard you talk before on a podcast about um, starting to do more testing um, with the factory or w- with the engineers. What, what does that look like or feel like? I mean, is that kind of as boring as it sounds? You go run a lap and come back and they tune something? or Yeah, it depends what they've got. You know, they might have something new that's actually a, a good step forwards, but mostly it's just small. We just, before the beginning of the uh, season, just uh, all the team gets together and we have a good, testing session with suspension and, and engine settings and stuff it's but nothing massively different I, I guess that's good to hear for for some of us who are on a budget and <laughs> yeah now i really have nothing to complain about <laughs> i thought it was the bike and it's just <laughs> yeah it's just i need it, to learn but, how to ride <laughs> but, yeah a well-maintained standard bike you know you can do anything get your tires right your mooses right uh your tire pressures and stuff and then you're good to go you mentioned mooses a couple of times. Have you ever run tubeless? I mean, obviously mooses have more sort of uh, durability for a race setting, but any thoughts on tubeless and how they stack up against a moose? Yeah, we just use the mooses. There's no risk of obviously puncturing. You can't have that risk in a race. And then, uh, you know, there's no uh, science to, you know, you can we mess around a little bit, different different mooses and stuff, drill, drill a few holes and all the rest of it. But with the moose as well, you know, you can have it flat and it, absorbs the impact on the rim as well so 
right yeah we just stick with that yeah no that that makes good sense i think i don't know i think maybe bonus questions yeah we're uh we're running out and i know covered our you know list. it's probably been about well over an hour anyways yeah. um, Be respectful of your time um so we had a few of our friends some of the guys that uh, we know on instagram etc that um sent in a few questions we're just going to kind of fire these off one at a time and just uh, you know real quick yes or no i guess i'll i'll kick off um it's kind of the the age old question um is it the rider or is it the bike and and you know how much of each one contributes to to being really good yeah the obvious answer you know the rider makes the biggest difference so you can ride if your technique's good you can ride anything fair enough <laughs> so we asked uh devin at broken enduro um well he asked the question about you know what do you do with heat exhaustion and i, I think that that came out of uh the last um it was that big bear trail ride he right. was uh we, we saw him right before he dipped out and he was just like completely dead is there anything you can heat do trail. to come back from heat exhaustion or obviously stay hydrated try to stay as cool as you can but like when you're riding in in hot weather you know is there just more than just being hydrated is there anything you can do to fight off the heat exhaustion uh yes yeah, stay hydrated stay as cool as possible so we don't really use any you know body armor so you know if you've got all that body armor on in a hot day you're probably more likely to to cook <laughs> yeah that that makes so, sense yeah, you've got to weigh up, you know, the safety aspect, obviously, but, you know, yeah. it's dangerous overheating as well, isn't it? So if it's, it's, if it's a weigh up, you know, just take a bit of that body armor off and uh, get a bit of air flowing through. I think I'd, I would panic without the gear on, probably. Yeah, he's the big gear guy. Are you uh, well, I've, I mean, I've well, come off too many times. Yeah, to, he, uh, he took a chip out of his spine, yeah. like, what, a year ago? A little less than a year ago now, so... With, with with the with the armor on, with the spine protector on, so I think yeah. it probably saved me. So I'm I'm gonna stay yeah. in it, but <laughs> yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll yeah, take the di- dehydration. Yeah. <laughs> um. So um. Every single Sunday, asked if any clinics are planned in the U.S., which you, I think you kind of answered a minute ago. But uh, any kind of timeline or or ideas there? Yeah, not at the moment. It's still tricky to travel. I think, isn't it, to U.S. But yeah, with my knee and everything as well. So when I get up and running, and uh, definitely be back over. Uh, you know, love going over there and lots of options in there lots of different places Very variation nice. yeah yeah lots, lots of, of crazy ride. people uh, <laughs> yes that too we have a few of those <laughs> <laughs> we're looking forward to that <laughs> geomoto yeah, yeah geomoto uh he asked uh if you ever rebuilt your shed which i think you you answered yeah we've not i, I kind of got a new shed but it's not put up yet my idea was to get a new one stronger one and then do it again properly <laughs> <laughs> so this is a this is a product uh, testing yeah. for them see if uh see if you can write shit it. in there yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's it um celine laflame asked um if you do anything in particular to recover after a big race um you know i just sleep it off maybe but uh yeah i think it's to it's important to get the food down quickly after a race and then uh you know uh just yeah relax and rehydrate massage whatever you can get sounds good <laughs> that does sound good <laughs> yeah. uh and the last one american dirt rider asked um if you had any childhood moto heroes and he also asked um about whether or not you enjoy working on the bikes or if you just leave that also the mechanics yeah i see growing up in the obviously in the trials world so you know i had some the world champions at the time were all my heroes and so you know i learned from them i was inspired by them and then uh you know, coming into enduro, probably looked up to some of the top guys then as well. At the time, Niter was the man, so you know, kind of looked up to what he was doing. Got inspiration for that, and then, but working on the bike, uh, try to avoid it if I can. <laughs> <laughs> has that has that it's always like, been the case, or is that like now because you can? I mean, yeah, you know, when I was younger, I did quite a lot of the maintenance on my own bikes, even for the you know the events and stuff. So, uh, but now just. Just I don't really like it. Yeah, <laughs> I can change a filter enough. if I have to, but no, fair enough. That makes sense. Um I think that's about all the questions that we had for you. Um again, immensely appreciate you taking the time to chat with us. We will absolutely put all the links to all the, your uh, your tours, et cetera, that we discussed um down in the description. Try to try to push some people that direction. Um 
highly recommend everybody check out your book as well and, and follow you on Instagram. It's always a good time. <laughs> Hopefully you'll crush the next shed as uh, impressively as the first one. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> cool, but, guys. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, oh, cheers. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Thank you. Son. We just talked to Graham Jarvis. Dude. <laughs>